I don't think consumers differentiate between 85, 95, and 90. People only differentiate between zero and 100. At the top, there's only room for one, right? I believe in India, 80% of celebrity usage in advertising that I see is not thought. Through. Creating is easy. What to create is a million-dollar question. Hi, you're listening to Marketing with Vani, in which I speak to marketing gurus. Together, we decode how marketing works in the real world to grow your business. Your business can only be as big as the market you choose to play in. Do you choose to play the big market and vie for a small share of that? or play in a small niche market and aim for a big chunk of that how you define your market determines how big you get in this episode vani shares some creative techniques and templates to broaden the way in which you can define your market peppered with loads of real life examples this episode is bound to deepen your business understanding and help you quickly gain clarity about your product listen on how big you get depends on how big your playground is because if your playground is small which is if the field on which you are competing is small then even if you become a king of that field you will still be small do you want to become the king in the puddle or would you rather be a small fish in a very very big ocean because if you aim big then you get big and this is applicable for life in general as well right? when you aim big you get big when you aim small then you can only be small so how big we get depends on how big our playground is now i want to make sure that all of you understand right at the very outset how big your playground is does not mean that i become just anybody that i don't have anything distinctive or differentiative about me it doesn't mean that everybody should become a commodity no It's about when we talk about the playground and this is what this session is going to be about the playground can be the mind the playground can be about changing behavior the playground can be a particular habit the playground does not have to be only the market as is conventionally understood so let's understand this better you can be a brand that is aiming for a small share in a very big playground and let's say you're a brand that is aiming to be only 2% of a very very large playground versus a brand that says look i'm happy to be small and i'm happy to be a 50% or a 20 to 40% player in a playground that is much smaller now when you do that let's look at numbers if you were to put numbers to this The first one you could the market could be as large as 30000 crores and that is in fact roughly the size of the branded snacking market in India today it's about 30000 crores now if i have yet another snack i could become 2% and i aim to be 2% of this 30000 crores one could argue 2% this is sound to be like a very tall ambition but 2% of a market that big is still very big because if i aim to be 2% then i become 600 crores if i were to aim to be even to have dominant share you know with 20 to 40% one could argue i will have dominant share as big as 50 crores of a market that is only 500 crores i'm still only 50 crores so with this i want to show you an example of exactly what this means why a brand so here is cracks curl so cracks is yet another snack brand right and one could argue yes it's yet another snack snack brand they are competing in the snacking market but cracks is still a much 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 bigger brand than a speciality product like epigamia now epigamia i must tell you has actually done exceedingly well it is one of the only flavored yogurts in the market and it's also scaled up rapidly fast but if epigonia were to say if they were to say not that they are saying it but if they were to say that my market is only the branded yogurt market then they are limiting the size of their ambition because the snacks market is huge the snack market is as large as 30000 crores but the branded yogurt market is estimated to be between 500 600 crores so 
if epigamia were to play only in that market they are limiting their ambition over a period of time whatever they might do they will only get to being that way however what epigamia has actually done is that they've chosen to go out and play in the snacking market isn't that interesting epigamia has understood that if i were to play in a puddle then i will only remain my ambition will only be limited to that puddle so epigamia has chosen to play big so now we've understood how a brand like epigamia has in fact expanded its ambition and they've reflected that in the commercial that i just showed right now every product or service solves an unsolved problem or it could deliver a solution in a delightfully new way but you must know what you are solving for and you must also know that if you are solving for something then there is certainly something that the consumer is doing in its place today it could be anything whether the consumer is using a competing product or the consumer is behaving in a certain way or the consumer is resorting to other alternatives whatever the consumer might be doing that is your competition okay now i explain this better with the example of a soft drink okay now here let's say it could be pepsi and pepsi says that my ambition is that i must help my consumer i must help the youth of this country to belong to the cool right if pepsi says that i want to help everybody belong to the cool then pepsi's competition could be anything that makes me look cool it could be styling products it could be a certain language that you know the college girls use to make themselves look cool which nobody really understands there are so many other words which nobody gets i certainly don't and then there are a whole lot of gadgets that they buy there's so many different apps that they use anything anything that is used to belong to the cool would be pepsi's competition pepsi's trying to be the cool and hence anything else that belongs or that helps you do that would be its competition let's look at it another way if pepsi were to say or let's say any cold drink were to say that the primary benefit that i deliver is i refresh i quench thirst then what would its competition be anything that refreshes any liquid that refreshes right it could be any juice it could be nimbu pani it could be a glass full of ice it can be anything that refreshes and this is exactly the thinking that coca cola took coca cola wanted to own the whole playing field of anything that refreshes of any beverage that refreshes and if you guys might remember coke came out with this lovely amir khan commercial when he said thanda matlab coke kuna thanda is the language of the masses everybody understands thanda you know when somebody comes home you always ask people aap chai lenge aap thanda lenge and coke wanted to own the word thanda coke wanted to become the dominant leader in the category that is defined as thanda and thanda is a very big word because thanda passes almost everything everything other than hot chai and coffee is thanda and that's what coke defined as their plain fini that was coke's competition so what they've done in this process is that they've defined their playing field and they've also clearly communicated to consumers that that is what we mean when you think of thanda you should think of the cola there is another one we also know that a lot of consumers actually prefer carbonated soft drink when they have khana when they look at it as a perfect meal companion so pepsi wanted to own that because that is really big there is a lot of us in a country like india who want a carbonated soft drink and pepsi said that we are going to become the king of that space we will become the best friend of the meal and so their whole strategy for the time that i was there with them and i think even now is primarily about being khana's best friend so whether it's a lassi or a kanji or a salad 
or even that pickle that a lot of the Rajasthanis have or in many other parts of the country, you know, uh, the pickle which has a whole lot of ajmain and salt and jeera and all of that, which you have along with the meal only because you want to feel that everything's gone down and settled. That's what they're competing against. Okay. Now, over here, I want to take this example of, uh, I've been watching a lot of Shark Tank with my son during this lockdown. And uh, in one of the episodes, there was this pitch that a couple made for a product, which is basically, it's like a bib that a man wears, a bearded man wears when he wants to tip his beard head. And he pins up this bib onto the sink in the bathroom. Because when you're flipping your bearded hair, as you can imagine, you can make a lot of mess in the bathroom. What's interesting about this is that when we came and presented on Shark Tank, at that time, you know, the shark said, so what's the big deal about this? You're presenting a beard bib. And how far can you go with a beard bib? How many beard bibs can you sell after all? It's just about keeping the motion tame. And that's when this woman, because there are a couple who pitched for this. She said, look, our ambition is to maximize sink share. And when she said that, that our ambition is to maximize sink share, that's when all the sharks sort of sat up in their seats and started listening to them carefully because it was a signal of how they are viewing their market. What is their market? Their market, as they're defining it, is everything that goes into the sink. They're looking to maximize sink share. It was a very interesting term, and that's what actually won them the investment in that episode. They actually went home with $100,000. Now, the only thing is that over here, with a name like Beard King, they're really limited in their possibilities because it seems to suggest that they're going to be things of the beard and beard only. And I, for example, wouldn't be able to grow a beard even if I wanted to. But stating their ambition to be, to maximize the sink share, says that they have the ability to think differently. Now, here's another example. ITR says that its ambition is to maximize its share of peace of mind at home. I really like this. ITR is not saying my competition is other furniture. ITR is not saying my competition is other beautiful things that can be kept in the house. No. ITA is not even saying anything functional is, is my competition. ITA is actually stating its ambition to be share of peace of mind at home. Look at Cadbury's. It's a not so recent commercial, but it's, of course, Cadbury's has been take, taking on the Mita. And, uh, you know, Cadbury's wants to become the Mita. They're basically aiming to compete against all of the Mithai because my Mithai is, is so ingrained in Indian culture. I want to draw your attention to a particular commercial which shows that Cadfins could also. Now, this is another way of just expanding your mind to possibilities. Cadfins says it could say that my ambition is to maximize my share of the I love you moments. Every time you want to tell somebody I love you and you find it difficult to express yourself because it's not the easiest thing to say sometimes when you feel woozy about somebody, you can actually use a chocolate. So now let's look at another example, Snickers. Snickers is not saying my ambition is yet another chocolate. Snickers is saying my ambition is to maximize the share of small hunger. They've designed their competition as small hunger. So anything that is had to satisfy small hunger, whether it's a samosa or the dokla or anything that you reach out for in the fridge, or any sort of a snack, it could even be a packet of chips that you reach out for. Anything that satisfies small hunger is their competition. And they say, they hit upon this lumpy consumer insight that when you're hungry, you're not quite yourself. You can behave very strange when you're hungry. We are here to learn how can I expand my mind to possibilities? How can I actually think big? Because if I don't think big, then I can't play big. And if I don't play big, then I don't become big. So to become big, you've got to be able to think big. And to be able to think big, you need some support. And here is what I've got. Let's look at Kurkure, my brand, which I see very, very, very affectionately about. Kurkure 
is a snack brand. Of course, we all know what Kurkure is. Kurkure's competition could be, if you were to think of the what, the what could be all other products that are once sold in this category. So this framework is a very, very simple framework. So this framework is the what, why, when, and where framework. And if you think of the what, the what is simply who are the others in the category. So Kurkure could, could say everybody else, any other snack, is my competition, whether it's a Lay's or a Bingo Mat Angles, anything that is another branded snack packet is my competition, right? The other way that Kunkure could think of its competition is what is the need or the desire that I serve? What do you think? What could be the desire that Kunkure as a brand could serve? We all know that a lot of us snack, not just because we are hungry, a lot of us actually snack when we're simply bored. And Kurkuri means to say, and it is, it is entertainment in the mouth. It's sensory means so stimulating, starting from the aroma that you get from the bag, as soon as you open the bag, to the drama in your mouth that it creates. And in that context, Kurkuri could actually look at competition as anything that helps you kill boredom. If it's a little snack, it could be soup that is its competition, apart from the many other things that are used to kill small hunger. It could be a Sudoku puzzle or a Rubik's Cube if I'm simply looking to entertain myself or I'm looking to stimulate myself with something, you know, because I'm simply bored. And instead, I could pick up a Sudoku puzzle. It could even be a Sutta break that I take because I'm simply bored. Kurkuri could also say that when I think of the when and I think of what specific occasion can I use or can I own? The when could be all family bonding occasions. So any occasion where family bonding is critical or where you'd like the family to come together, Kurkuri serves as the ideal solution for that occasion. So Kurkuri's competition then is anything else that is used to bring the family together. So in that context, Kurkure's competition could actually be a board game, which serves to bring the family together. Kurkure's competition could be what else? It could even be pakoras. Everybody loves pakoras. It could be movie time. And lastly, if Kurkure were to say that my competition is a place, a specific piece of real estate, a special place that I'd like to own, Kurkure could say that I want to maximize my share of the tea tree which means Kurkuri is saying anything that is served on the tea tree must necessarily have a bag of Kurkuri on it. So my competition or my playing field is defined as the tea tree. So now we're going to do this exercise for Netflix. So now what we're going to do is we're going to apply this framework for Netflix. Now let's think about what is Netflix's obvious competition if we were to apply the lens of the what. The what being who else is playing the OTT platform. It is, yes, Amazon Prime. It is Hotstar. It is YouTube. How can I steal market share from these other OTT platforms? And hence, my ambition could be that Netflix wants to maximize its share versus own other OTT platforms, right? Now come to the why, or what is the need that Netflix serves? It's personalized entertainment at your fingertips. For a lot of us, it's also the me time. For me, it's my me time. And that's what would go in the box right under the why. And hence, what could Netflix's ambition be? Maximize me time. That Netflix be the only option that consumers think of when they're looking to make the best of their me time. Now let's move to the next column, which is the when. Now, do you think Netflix, think of the when, think of a time band or think of an occasion. Do you think that there is an occasion or a time band that Netflix could aim to own? So for me, the 10 p.m. to 12 a.m., that those two hours after dinner is when I want to reward myself with Netflix. Because I tell myself, it's been a good day, I've done what I had to, now I deserve a little reward. So that time for me is my Netflix time. Now, if you think of place or you think of real estate in that sense, think about it. For us, when we're all bored, we typically mindlessly tend to go to apps like WhatsApp or other apps on our phone. Imagine if Netflix were to define its place, the where, as the mobile screen and 
think of its competition as anything that distracts away from Netflix on the mobile screen. And in that context, Netflix's ambition could then be the only app that my thumb seeks in default mode. Okay, so let's try this exercise with Zomato now. So think of if the what. What is Zomato's obvious competition? So now we're looking at Zomato in the context of being a food ordering and delivering platform. Don't think about uh, Zomato's dining business, but specifically of Zomato as a platform where we order food and we look for options, food options. In that context, what would Zomato's immediate competition be? Dunzo, Amazon Foods, Uber Eats, yes, absolutely. Domino's, yes. All of this is competition in the world. Now let's come to the next one. What is the need that Zomato is serving? What Zomato does is that it brings me my favorite food here. Am I right? Or to my office or wherever I am. I can go to that platform. I can look at the huge, huge number of options that there are. And I can pick my favorite food. And I can rely on them to bring me my favorite food wherever I wish it to be. So the need that's being served over there is that of the convenience of favorite food at any time, at any place that I want it to be delivered at. Now let's think of the when. Is there a particular time band? Is there any special occasion? If you think of Zomato's business, which is about ordering in food, do you think that there is a particular time band that they could look at? Zomato could say, yes, I deliver food all 24 hours. In that context, what could Zomato's competition be? If I'm thinking of different time bands, my favorite food at any time, what would I do otherwise? What else would you do otherwise? You'd probably go to the kitchen and you'd open the fridge, you'd open the pantry and see, what can I eat? What is here? What is here? What is here? Let's say if it's any time, it could be that I drive out to a restaurant that's open at this time. If it's a strange time in the night and I've been pubbing and drinking and dancing all night and at 3 a.m. I want to have dinner somewhere, then it is that five star that has an all night and say, all of that is competition to me, right? And hence the sole word for Zomato would be, how can I build Zomato as the only option that anybody turns to when my tummy desires anything at all at any time. And hence, Zomato's ambition could be to convert all not homemade food occasions to Zomato occasions. Now imagine if I could bring all of the restaurants home and that's what Zomato helps me to do. Which means Zomato's playing field then is the house. Zomato wants to bring the outside world of dining out within the house. The only idea of this framework is only to help you expand your mind to possibilities on how you can think about your competition. If you think about it, you're struggling to figure out what else is this category used for. For example, over here, I use mobile. If you were to actually use this technique, which I call the think deprivation technique. Now, this is very, very powerful as a tool in expanding your mind to what all are the various needs that are served by a particular product. If you could actually take it away, imagine if you, if you had to live without your phone for 24 hours. If you were to study a consumer behavior and a consumer's mind, mind frame, if the phone were to be taken away from him for 24 hours, how would he feel? It would give you a lot of insights on what this person's relationship with the phone is and all of the different needs that a mobile phone actually serves for a consumer. The flip way of looking at this is think excess. There are consumers who are extreme users. Imagine a consumer, and there's actually a very in video that I've got, but we've run out of time terribly. Imagine a consumer who has an extreme relationship with chewing gum. And there is this guy who says he's tried out this experiment. He had chewing gum continuously for 30 days every day. And he says, why did he chew that chewing gum for 30 days every day in all of his waking hours? He was trying to acquire a more defined jawline. Isn't that interesting? Would we ever think about a chewing gum serving that need? A chewing gum that helps you to acquire a more defined jawline. 
in that context, a chewing gum's competition would be any kind of a diet. It could even be cosmetic surgery. It could even be any kind of facial yoga. It could even be camera filters or any sort of face apps that make you look pretty. All of that would then become the chewing gum's competition. The only reason why I'm showing you this is again to help you think of techniques, to use techniques that can specifically be applied to help you think of different ways of expanding your mind to the different possibilities. Google Trends is also another brilliant tool often underused. And Google Trends, if you were to actually get Google to give you a little class on how Google Trends could open up your thinking, you'd be surprised at the number of ideas that Google Trends itself can throw. You. All of this comes at zero cost. This episode was brought to you by Cherry Peach Plum. Vani and her team of marketeers and problem solvers at Cherry Peach Plum help businesses solve a wide range of growth challenges by utilizing proven marketing playbooks. Get in touch with us via cherrypeachplum.in if you want to take your brand to the next level. I hope you liked my show. And if you did, please do consider subscribing. I also have a YouTube channel by the same name, Marketing by Vani. Please do check that out too. Thank you. <laughs> How badly could you screw up one line? <laughs> okay. So I did screw up. My YouTube channel is called Marketing with Vani, the same name as this podcast. 